Southeast Ohio's best coverage. This is News Channel 5. I've been kidnapped and I've been missing for 10 years and I'm, I'm here. I'm free now. Tomorrow marks one year since three young women were freed after years of captivity on Seymour Avenue. And a lot has changed in the last 364 days. I'm getting stronger each day. Thank you for the support. God has a plan for all of us. This is a live look at Seymour Avenue tonight. The House of Horrors, where Ariel Castro held the Marion Berry, Gina DeJesus, and Michelle Knight for so many years, is now long gone. And tomorrow, the three women will celebrate their first year of freedom. As we get set to mark this first anniversary, there is new information out tonight about the case. Good evening, I'm Chris Flanagan. And I'm Lee Jordan, in for Danita tonight. The prosecutor's office releasing nearly a thousand pages of documents. The release, the first of several plan the prosecutor plans to make. News Channel 5's John Kosick is live on Seymour. And John, there is a mountain of evidence to go through in this case. Yeah, no question about it, Lee. Check it out. This isn't just a few documents, 989 pages worth. And as you mentioned, just the first installment. The key evidence released by the prosecutor's office represents primarily that which we learned in detail at the sentencing of Ariel Castro last August. Included in the nearly 1,000 pages is the handwritten report of one of the first officers to enter the house. And the report of the officer who talked to Amanda Berry about her escape, a story that backed up Charles Ramsey's account of what happened May 6th. Heard screaming. I meet my McDonald's. I go on the porch. So we kick the bottom. And she comes out with the little girl. And she says, call 911. My name was Amanda Berry. There is also the statement by Ariel Castro the next day to a Cleveland police officer he knew essentially admitting his guilt. In reference to a journal, Amanda Berry kept while in captivity a black notebook titled Love. Many portions of the report, which can be found online at newsnet5.com, are blacked out as the prosecutor's office weighed the public's right to view the documents with the victim's rights to privacy. It is that privacy that Gina and Amanda are still requesting but in statements released today on the eve of this anniversary, they wanted to say thank you and update their progress. Amanda saying, so much has happened this past year. I have grown. I am strong and I have so much to live for, to look forward to. The future is bright. Gina thanked all who gave to the Carriage Fund for the difference that they have made in her life. She said the past year has been amazing, full of healing and hope. I have also been enjoying new experiences, such as learning how to use new technology and how to drive. And Gina also talking about the time she's now spending with Amanda as they together write a book that will be out next year. Michelle Knight's book out right now, available in stores this week. Live on Seymour Avenue, John Kosick, News Channel 5. Boy, John, Gina's statement is sure a reminder of how much time they spent in captivity. Do you know if there's anything official planned there on Seymour Avenue tomorrow? Nothing officially planned for the site here itself, but I got to tell you, never have I been out here and you don't see a steady stream of people, onlookers coming by to check out what remains of the site. And you can imagine that will be the case tomorrow, too. All right, John Kosick on Seymour Avenue tonight.